I'm me, you're you, bah! And this is Wiggly's Book Club 031. Wiggly's Book Club would like to welcome you to Wiggly's Book Club. Wiggly's Book Club is a fortnightly read brought to you live from Sloppy Joe's Bar. I don't know where I'm going. Located in scenic Easton, Pennsylvania. Tonight's read is the 1987 Writer's Digest Books classic, Melvin Hellitzer, Comedy Writing Secrets. How to think funny, write funny, act funny, and get paid for it. Down to me in Sloppy Joe's Bar, Wiggly. Today I have it. Today I have it already. I, the, the lights on, uh, and I'm I, I I have the same microphone now upstairs as I down have as I down have. Soppy Joe's have. Let me just get a drink. Captain Morgan's private stock. Oops. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Oh, happy New Year! I wasn't gonna. I forgot that it was the today, you know? I forgot the two fingers. I forgot that it was today. Um, so uh, just a rum and coke and uh, getting on the mic here. I didn't know what I was going to read, of course. Oh, I still got my camera going for... I'm ready to take my picture with the book. So this is a mic, this is a mic and, and it should sound better. Now, here's the problem. Inst- instead of using my Z, uh, my Tascam... <laughs> If I have it right side up, my IXZ Tascam. I'm uh, going into the uh, the old iPad. I'm using my Alexis. Alexis IO Dock. IO Dock. Now this is for the iPad Gen 2, so it has that big long hoop de doo on it. So I what I should have done was kept this bluish microphone. It's only blue in color. The BM bowel movement 700 and then just try to use the bowel movement 700 with the LS Alexis Al Alexis Alexis I just say Alexis I should have used that with that and see if it's the uh the IX7 or the Alexis or if it's the BM700 and the other okay well I bumped that Okay, I still have problems with knowing where to put this. I should I should get a lapel mic. Uh, the problem is I can't afford. Uh, 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 I don't even have a joke. That's why I'm reasoning. Reason, reasoning. Uh, that's why I'm reading Melvin Hellitzer, comedy writing secrets: how to think funny, write funny, act funny, and get paid for it. And right on the front, it got a. It has a fella. He's got a, he's got he's wearing a tie and, and shoes. He's dressed business, not even business casual. What type of comedy writer doesn't dress business casual? He looks like a businessman, and yeah, I think a pen is in his hand, and uh, he's he's walking along with his you know fancy shoes, probably alligator skin. It's hard to tell because it's a drawing, and it doesn't have any type of thing that. What was that? Was that me? Boy. I don't know what that was. And he's getting ready to step on a banana peel. Banana peel, you see. Let me... uh Uh-oh. Whoops. Uh, I don't even have a card trick or a rope trick lined up. Now, I said it was last minute, so let me just get my phone so it's not on. Then when I try to do the album cover, the album cover's all off. Now, yesterday I did clean up the... Normally... Around the Halloween time, you'll see the all the decorations still up. Melvin How Melvin Hel- Helitzer, Melvin Helitzer, uh, winner of the Helitzer Prize, Writer's Digest Books. Uh, here's a picture of him right on the back. Now he, now, oh well, see he's wearing a tie. He's wearing a two-piece suit with the tie. Comedy writing secrets. Uh, the, here's the pre the reference. 
It's not the preference, it's the reference. Comedy writing secrets. So you've got the gift of glee, and you long to make people laugh, huh? Well, uh, with Melvin Hellitzer help, you can, either from behind the typewriter or, and or before the live audience. You see, you can write your jokes right in front of a live audience. That's what Jerry Springsteinfield does. What's his name? Jerry Springer Field? I don't know what he is. He's a uh, Seinfeld. That's it, Seinfeld. What's with all the cash registers? Why do they go ding and you put money in them? It's cash register. Why are you putting in coins? They're supposed to be cash. Uh, never like that. Don't watch it. In the book, Funny Man and University Professor Hellitzer reveals all the tricks of the comedian trade. Comedian's trade. You now see, comedian, not comic. What the... You'll learn, or not comic book either, you'll learn the probably like uh, Bazooka Joe, you know? What about him? What about that guy? Hasn't he made millions in your bazooka? What are you doing in a gum? Oh, bubbles. Uh, the basics of comedy writing, the anatomy of humor, uh, get into the anatomy of it, and, and get into the forensics, the forensic science of humor. I'm, that's not here. The basics of comedy writing, the adventures by which you humana, 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 by which you can turn your comedic talent into a well-paying pursuit. You know, I never got to that chapter. What the? Uh, even when the demand for humor writers far exceeds the supply, you see. Hellitzer gives you proven professional advice and exercises to help you. Not, not, not with the page I turn to. Whew. Here's the bullet points. Free your imagination to spot the humor in situation. Master, how am I doing on time? Uh, six. <sighs> Thank you, six. Free your, master the three fundamental steps for, of putting, joke, putting a joke together. Just one joke. That's all you need to do. Uh, wield the power of the play on words. Oh, my dyslexia is kicking in. Plus, I can't see. It's dark and I'm drunk. Legally blind in one eye, and uh, I can't read. Did I mention I can't read? Make deft use of reverse and triples. Reverses and triples. Triples are the best, especially triple nipples. When you get the third nipple, now you know. Comedy. Uh, mind the phonetic gold in your funny words. I got the best words. These statements might not be true. Uh, mine the phonetic gold in funny words. Effectively exaggerate or understate the truth. Understating the truth. Hmm. Hey, how about writing for uh, Saturday Night Live? What do you do for that? Oh, fish out of water? That's the only skit that you ever do? Ha, ha, ha. Look at him. He's so weird and he doesn't even know it. Ha, ha, ha. Everybody doesn't realize I. he's weird. And I'm the only one. Ha, ha, ha. Am I the fish out of water because it's the reverse fish out of water? Ha, ha, ha. This is the only skit we know how to do. Ha, ha, ha. It's so funny for 32 years or whatever the hell. Okay. Write for the 20 basic comic personas. There's only 20 basic comic personas. Well, I just told you the one that Saturday Night Live uses. Um, master the skills of comedy performance. Okay, I'll master them. I am, why? I master them right in here. Ten ninety nine. This would have cost you in the UK. In the US, it was sixteen ninety nine, and then it was a ten two nine one. And in Canada, which has uh, parentheses around it, parentheses, it's can twenty six ninety nine. Woo wee! Yeah, look this up. Just for the back, with the guy, he's got his hand. He's got he's got his hand on his thing, and. Uh, who was who this? Shecky, not Shecky Green. Who did that? Take my wife, please. That's sort of the pose he's doing. Hecky, heck, heck, heckle Youngman. That's why, is this, is that why his name is Shecky? No, not Shecky. Hellitzer. Because he didn't want to be go hog heck. <sighs> <sighs> Or by the way, packed with more than a thousand one-liners, bits, and speech excerpts. Well, what the hell? You got, 
You got a thousand one-liners, hey, that lasts you through the year. Just do that. Just write these down, do that. Demonstrating the whole, did I mention that I forgot I was supposed to do this and I'm just doing it? Yeah. Demonstrating the whole range of comedy techniques uh, as practiced by such major comics as Steve Martin. Hey, let's get small. Well, excuse me. Yeah, I'm so mad at my mother. The other day, she asked me if I could borrow some money. Uh, I can't remember why. For some food, that's why. <laughs> so I, yeah. Well, I'm having her move my barbells up to the attic. No, no that's yeah, that's uh, Steve Martin. Uh, that's the old uh, understating and overstating. Billy Crystal, Mel Brooks, Lily Tomlin, and dozens of others. Dozens. And with 1,000 one-liners, he only has dozens of people. The complete with chapters on writing humor into a speech gag, writing for cartoons and comics and script. We don't have to write comedy anymore. All we have to do is uh, mimic Donald Trump's speeches. Uh, plasma, plasma. Um, writing humor into a speech gag writing for cartoons and comics. And it's all good. And scripting for television situation comedies. This guy read my mind. Uh, this book, I mean, give me my five bucks for taking my bit from earlier. This book will give you the facts you need to get serious about making it big in comedy. The reverse. Serious in comedy. Comedy Writing Secrets by Melvin Hellitzer. By Writer's Digest Books, Cincinnati, Ohio. About the author. Uh, permissions. Uh, let me read that. Uh... Excerpts of Art Botchwald's <laughs> column reprinted with permission uh, of the author, Los Angeles Times Syndicate, 1986. Comedy Writing Secrets, copyright 1987. By, wow, he didn't wait long to steal that, huh? Uh, by uh, 1987 by Melvin Heltzer, Hellitzer, printed and bound in the United States of America. That's nice, not like uh, Donald Trump's hats. Make America great again, made in China. Uh, yeah. Can you tell what's going on? Getting rid of that guy. All rights reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced in any forms or by, like, we don't, I don't know what that means. Other fine writer, writer's digest books are available at your local bookstore or direct through the publisher. Library of Congress cataloging and publication data. Now, why it says 06050403 14, 10. You got me on that one. Um, maybe those aren't the patent numbers. Well, wait a minute. What am I? I'm a five. A five would be... A five is mentioned here, but a five is for digital recordings or records of 45s. Uh, bibliography, P. Took a P. I got a P. Okay, Magnus Hopus. That's his, uh, that's here. Not the Magnus Opus, the Magnus Hopus. 1234, thank you, 1234. Dedication. This, my fourth book, is dedicated to my wife and children. Now listen, you're giving me the comedy writing secrets. Now, why did you have to write four books on it? If you already gave it to us in our first book, this is like self-help, you know? Why, why sweat the small stuff? It's all small stuff. Then another book on self-help. Why? Did you, did you fuck up the first time? Uh, this is my fourth book. is dedicated to my wife and children who, brought, who bought the other three. <laughs> Understate it. Table of contents. Um, I'm surprised he didn't do a pun in there. Cable of pun tents. How about... I suck. <laughs> introduction. Introduction by the three R's of humor. Oh, nice. Gain respect. Make people remember you and be rewarded for being funny. Make out your map for success. Map is the three P's of practice, practice, practice. Make out your map. Map. Uh... Maybe, I think MAP stands for something else in practice, 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 because 
as far as I know, that only has the P in it. Uh, part one, the basic of uh, humor writing. Chapter one, imagination is f funny, taking the first steps. Use what ifs to, <laughs> hey, 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 use what ifs to rearrange reality into funny patterns. Learn the basic jokes construction formula. Chapter two, the why we laugh theories of comedy. We laugh because of surprise. Boy, you know what? I'd like to do each chapter of this of a separate episode for the next year. We laugh because of surprise. Superiority. Ah, yes, yes. Make your uh, audience think, hey, we're better than the other people that we're going to laugh at. You're in the elite. Uh, superiority. Biological inclinations. Incongruity. Ambivalence. Releasing tension. Uh, filling in for con filling in configurations and psychology. All of which, boy, now he, see, he put the ellipses instead of a double dash. And psychology, all of which boils down to, I'm Chevy Chase and you're not, superiority. Now, what did he say between the and psychology and then, what did he say next? That Then at the end he said, all of which boils down to, he didn't say anything. Just put a comma or put the double dash if you want to. Take a, uh, a pause there for some reason. Now, see, in this next one, he does that. The anatomy of humor, the threes formula, chapter, and that's in chapter three. How about that? It's almost as he planned it. Learn the essentials of humor. Target honest. Now, see, I now he's using the double dash. Use, use the essentials of humor. Pause. Not. Uh, target. Hostility, realism, exaggeration, and emotion. These five factors add up to threes. How am I doing on time? 16. 16. Thank you, 16. Uh, let me tell you something. Ah. Um, not bad. Not bad. I'm using half calf on the, on the cola. Half, uh, half. Weiss brand Diet Cola and half Wegmans brand Diet Decaf Cola. I hate decaffeinated cola. Decaffeinated Diet Cola. Except for Wegmans. Why? I don't know. But regular decaf cola, it gives me the heartburn. Now, uh, what I want to mention here is I, I bought this uh, when it was very, like, I think it was like $2 at that place called Fies, Fies, uh, whatever that was called, that record store. And, uh, oh, one thing about this Alexis uh, is that you have to really make sure it's shoved in there properly or else this doesn't work. So hopefully it's, being, hopefully it's working, pardon me, by the way. Uh, so I bought this thing called, uh, what's that show? Uh, singing, American Idol. I bought this tape set about American Idol. And, uh, you know, I had a booklet, and then you do these uh, cassette tapes, and you learn how to sing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I should have took some nasal medicine. All I did was read the back of it that talked about talk singing. So I just read the, the back, just like I read this uh, reference in the back here, this, this magazine. I just read the back and it mentioned about talk singing. And then I recorded my song, uh, uh, C-Rex, Save Me From What I Become. And if you notice in there, people didn't even know it was me singing. I didn't, I didn't put any of the cassettes in. I didn't look at the book. I looked at the back and I said, oh, talk singing, done. If I read this book, all I have to do is read these table of contents. And I tell you what, I already know how to do these jokes now. Chapter four, POW, is a play on words. That's the acronym, POW. POW packs a punch with the cops. Twisted cliches, double entendres, too literal truth. Call me a taxi. Okay, you're a taxi. Ah, ha, 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 ha. See, the literal truth. The, uh, what's it called? Too, as in too much, Two with the two O's, literal truth. Two literal truth. And I did that with one of my uh, gags from Vine. 
And oh, and I, you know what? I think I said, "Would you would you like me to call you a cab?" And I said, "You're a cab that killed in the Borsch Belt." Now, see, he forgot to say at the end of that that killed in the Borsch Belt. If he would have added that, now I would have laughed. This one, I I didn't laugh. <laughs> maybe I got maybe I got that from reading this. <laughs> This uh, table of context. I got to tell you, I think I did. <laughs> ah, I crack me up sometimes. Reforming familiar phrases into surprising ways. Very punny. <laughs> See, he's not good on the puns. Takeoffs and odd, okay, uh, and odd associations. Using cliches as springboards. Now, See, he, he does the double dash here, but he's just sort of separating things. Which I guess is okay, but just use a single dash. Using cliches as springboards to humor. Chapter 5, brainstorming POW association. Practice skewing the familiar uh, to find the funny. Chapter 6, the next... I'm, I'm talking in a side of the mic out of the side of my mouth. Chapter 6, it's because my arms hurt if I try to hold this book out like this. Uh, chapter 6, the next giant step reverses... Uh huh. Turning ideas upside down, inside out, and every which way, but dull or obvious. Don't telegraph your jokes, or you'll stamp on your punchline, and your audience will cancel their laughter. Cancel. <laughs> this is prophetic. Uh, I wonder if he says about playing it for the truth. I haven't heard that yet. Uh, instead of for the guffaw. I haven't even, I haven't heard the word guffaw yet. Let's see if it's in here. Chapter 7, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered Triples. Preparation plus anticipation, <laughs> timing, per, per, precipitation, uh, perspiration, no, preparation plus anticipation plus payoff equals funny. I didn't listen to a word I said, but evidently you do those Write them down, and then you'll you'll understand what that was. Chapter eight. How many doing on time? Time to go. Yeah, twenty-one fifth seven. Okay, team. Chapter nine. Funny words. The spark plug of humor. Spark plugs of humor. Indeed, pickle is funny. It is. In fact, I was going to do pickle jokes, but you know what? It's not pickle jokes. It's banana jokes. I think. I was going to do that, but I'll do it after. I'll do it in two weeks because. This book teaches you how to be funny, and the banana joke book, you'll find out. Here's a hint. Not funny. <laughs> it's funny. Pause. Not. <laughs> wow, wow, wee wow. <laughs> Can you tell that that new Borat movie came out? I'm still doing the first Borat movie. I had to go back and rewatch the first Borat, Borat movie because I knew that this Borat movie wasn't as funny, but... It was more situational, and, uh, uh, you know, I liked it. Uh, it definitely pointed out the things in America, and I remember him doing that chant along things with, um, yeah, I can't remember the, the terrible things he says about doing to uh, Democrats. But I remember that being in the news uh, uh, chapter 11, surprise them or shock them. Nihilistic humor and languages. And language. Oh, my God. Things that are present are participled and participled presence or presently. Things that are plural or implural. Humor can be a four-letter word, especially if you can't spell. Oh, that's, that's nihilistic. Chapter 12, stay in character, speak softly, but carry a big shtick. Ah, you ruined it. Develop one of the 20 masks of comedy to create comic character. Not only will your jokes be funnier, you'll project a funny a attitude. I got to read slower. Today's been, it's been a stressful week, friends. I, I don't even want to tell you about it because I don't want you to get stressed out and depressed too. But it's the first time my watch told me I was stressed. Usually when I take a stress test, I, 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 I trick my watch and I do my Buddha, Buddhist meditation techniques and trick it. I also take it off when I do. No. 
That wasn't funny, but you know what it is? A smoking monkey from a yeah. Uh, but that's not in here. Now that's chapter 12. Now we go into part two, the markets. Now chapter 13 is testing, one, two, three, writing humor for speeches, how to prepare the speech and a speaker, choose the right title, overcome stage fright, deliver the speech, and pick the audience out of the aisles afterward. And pick the audience out of the aisles after all, because they're rolling in the aisles. Pick them up. Ha <laughs> ha, sick of far. Chapter 14, stand up or sit down. Humor for live entertainers. Is stand there? Stand who? Stand up. Stand up, stand up. Is uh, Sid? Sid there? Sid who? Sid down. Sit down, sit down. I like that stuff. I don't know what happened to those guys. Oh, I know that one guy died. Chapter 14, stand up or sit down. Uh, humor uh, for live entertainers. Comedians do it standing up, but you don't have to take inexperience, lying, I'm going to guess down, doggy style, down, no, wait, lying, holy Christ, this has got a lot of chapters, it has a lot of chapters, 221, chapter 4, no, but you don't have to take inexperience, lying, no period, next page, Learn how to break in, where to send your jokes, and how to approach established comedians with your material. And it's a capital learn. So uh, somebody didn't uh, tile Texas probably. Whoops. 15. Oh my God, 25, 40. 15. Saw the picture, loved the gag, humor for cartoons and comics. Write one liners or an event funny visuals for single panel cartoons. Ziggy, we hate you. Yeah, you suck. Go away, Ziggy. Go die. <laughs> uh, visuals for single panel cartoons are go for the running gag, comic strips, and political cartoons. Boy, I'll tell you what. That Thimble Theater, I'm so glad that I was able to get some of those Popeye books um, before Popeye was the star of Thimble Theater. It used to just be the oil family. And I'm so glad I was able to get those. I, I, I'm sure they probably cost a hundred billion zillion dollars by now. Chapter six, that's an exaggeration, a joke. Chapter 16, see, I learned already. Poses, prose, proses are, re are red. Proses are red. Humor for greeting cards, t-shirts, and bumper stickers. Proses are red. Isn't that funny? It's a, it's a pun. Develop quick take ha-has. Quick take ha-has is, is a hyphenated word. Quick take ha-has for the eyes of thousands. You can develop that. Chapter 17, print humor, columns, articles, and fillers. Write humorous pieces for newspapers and magazines. Um, 322 is the index, so it's a, that's a lot of pages of uh, these types of things. Chapter 18, the scarce comedy, comedy tea, comedy tea. Writing for sitcoms. The scarce comedy tea. Comedy tea. Okay, I, I think I understand, but I can't think of what a sitcom is. Like a documentary tea. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, chapter 19. This is uh, Don't yell at your radio. This is a wrap. Most commonly asked questions about humor construction. Learn about toppers, writing jokes backwards, local life, of course. You, you make a maze backwards, you write a joke back, you write a mystery backwards, usually, unless you want to try to trick yourself into a mystery. Um, localizing, timing, working the audience, hiding a joke, and other generally hysterical tips about the serious business of humor. Oh, the appendix starts at 303. Okay. Books are a, writer, books are a humor writer's library. So you got uh, 300, about 300 pages of stuff. 28, I gotta write, I gotta, I gotta get out of here. There's a preface I would love to read. Um, three R's, Map for Success. The Map for Success is a triangle, I'm just gonna ruin it for you. On one side of the triangle, and it's it's it it could be it could be an equilateral triangle, 
but because they don't have a lot of room in here, they made it a squeezed equilateral. Uh, material is on the one side uh, bottom. Performer is on the other side bottom. And at the top is audience. So material, audience, performer, performer, audience, material. La, 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 la. Take it in any way you want. The basics of humor writing. Here we go. Imagination is chapter one. 29-21. I'm going to go. Oh, here's a, here's a, here's a funny one, one, uh, one panel cartoon. The kid's looking in a pickle jar. I'm going to say it's a pickle jar. And a, it's, a, it's some type of jar. He's got the fridge door open. His mom is doing the dishes. And she looks somewhat tiny-eyed, surprised, looking to the side a little bit. It's not a spit take. It's not a double take. It's sort of like a... And the kid is looking down in there and he says, What if the yogurt spoiled? How would we know? I ask that a lot. But I'm serious. 29, we're at 30. But let's just see how this guy starts out here. Uh, imagination is funny. I'm going to just read the, this uh, one and a half pages. Imagination is funny. Taking the first step. The first step in humor conception is imagination. It's called what if. What if, you see. What if Spider-Man was part of Fantastic Four? Yeah. The two most important words in, I think that was the first what if. Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't. Because even when I'm right, I'm, even when I'm right, I'm wrong. And when I'm wrong, I'm right. So two most important words in creativity, uh, in creativity and the only stimulant a humor writer needs to get started. Imagination is intelligence having fun, writes George Ski la la ba 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 ba. You know what? Oh, what if that? Those are the two most important words. Okay, I went off. Look at a clear glass ashtray. Okay, let's see. Okay, look at it. I'm looking at it. It has a place for cigarettes and yeah, just cigarettes. I thought it might have a place for pipes, but just cigarettes. It's a round one. It's clear. Look at a clear glass ashtray. What do you see? Uh, glass, clear glass. <laughs> uh, it's round and it's got a place for two cigarettes. Um, if you can see beyond its ordinary function, humor writing may be for you. <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, the humorist sees what is logically illogical, perceiving something. Well, I, I see something I could throw at somebody's head and fucking crack their skull open. Is that? Uh, the humorist sees what is logically illogical, perceiving something in a way no one else, at least in the audience, has considered before. The comedy writer Pat McCormick, it's not an ashtray at all but a diaphragm for the Statue of Liberty. No, no. I don't know any ashtray that would be large enough to be a diaphragm for the Statue of Liberty, okay? It's a diaphragm for my ex-wife. You know, because you need a two by four to put over there so you don't fall in because her vagina is very large. Uh, when you're trying to f have sex in there. <laughs> Uh, for such a liberty, a bathtub for Dudley Moore. Hey, hey, that's not funny. He's dead. Uh, a contact lens for the Jolly Green Giant, or a yarmulke, 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 a yarmulke for a bald rabbi trying to get a suntan. Hey, that's pretty good. A yarmulke. Uh, the realignment of diverse elements into new and unexpected relationships surprises the audience and makes them laugh. Ha, ha, ha. What if mother's milk was ever declared a health hazard? Where would they put the warning label? On the tit. That's why I can answer that. What if you actually saw McNuggets on a chicken? <laughs> uh, what if the... And now, oh, my God. You know what? I can't read any of uh, this. I'm not going to go yet. Even though I'm three minutes over, I'm going to drink more. I think I have to stand up for this comedy. Because stand-up comedy. Okay, here we go. Hey, this is much better, but I don't know if I'm if talking through my nose. It probably doesn't matter. I'm stuffed up. What if... Al <laughs> 
What if Apple Jack? What if Apple Jack met Discord? What if Alphabet Soup can? Oh my God! It's been a rough one, man. It's only Wednesday. I gotta write up some invoices. What if Alphabet Soup constantly spelled out obscene words? Uh, I'd be eating a lot of Alphabet Soup, I'll tell you that. Uh, here we go. As a, as a demonstration, as a demonstration, let's consider a simple humor exercise. Two Coke bottles are held up. What could they possibly be besides bottles? Scribble down as many exaggerations as possible without being restrained from practically Practicality. Without being restrained from practicality, do it. Uh, within five minutes, you should come up with a list like this. That's not right. You could come up with a better list than this, I'm sure. I'm sure these are going to suck. Okay. Uh, write down your answers. I'll listen offline. Here's his bullet points of what he came up. Bowling pins left standing by the first ball. Pins used by a juggler. Watch a soda bottle. <laughs> uh... A pair of binoculars for a U-boat commander. Portable urinals. Polish cocktail glasses. Hey! Uh, Polish cocktail. That's a weird one, though. Huh? I guess because you pour a cocktail out of a bottle. I don't think you do. That sucks. Uh, earplugs for elephants. Oh, that would that would really hurt the elephant. I, that's Siamese twins formerly joined at the lips. Uh, medical devices for reshaping the tongue. Non-working funnels. I like the non-working funnels. I've used that non-working funnels before. I think Stinky might have said something about non-working funnels. In fact, he, he, he invented a non-working funnel. That's what it was. Uh, but I can't remember exactly the, the joke that he did. Uh, but it was something like that. Fingernail polish protectors, golf tees for very f golf tees for very fat man. Oh. Why would that be a golf tee for a very fat man? That's really sad. You'll stick it up your poop chute and then get a golf ball off that. How you like that? Guy that's probably dead by now or what's his name? Melvin Hellitzer. Cornholes. <laughs> Spin the bottles for schizophrenics. That's pretty good. Uh, corn holders for the Jolly Green Giant. Or a newfangled breast implant. I was going to say about the boobies because T.T. Schmookins, you know. Uh, that's about all. The hu this human Rorschach test is more than an exercise. It's the key to comedy's engine, which won't turn over without unbridled imagination. Train your mind to constantly ask, what if? And uh, brainstorm possibilities. Don't worry if your ideas seem absurd or silly or fucking offensive as hell, like the ones that you came up with and dumb. They're not really. The idea now is to get your imagination in gear. Humorists have one cardinal rule. Don't be intimidated. <laughs> I'm thinking about the election. Election. Don't be inhibited. Oh God! It's better to take a nihilistic attitude towards all subjects and to pussyfoot around taboos when writing. Write freely. Mm, I say so too. Make uninhibited assumptions. Put your brain on tilt, says Frank O'Donnell. Write everything down. Editing and self-censorship are the second and third steps, never the first. And then it goes into observation, no humor, joke formulas, and the such. I really would like to come back to this at some time and after the banana uh, book. B banana book, I'll be able to do a couple pages. Um, because I want to get to the threes, to the arts of threes. Okay, Melvin Hellitzer, back to me. Yeah. 
Wiggly's Book Club hopes that you enjoyed tonight's read of the 1987 Writer's Digest books. Classic! Melvin Helleter, Comedy Writing Secrets, How to Think Funny, Write Funny, Act Funny, and Get Paid for It. Wiggly's Book Club would like to apologize to tonight's super secret surprise celebrity guest. Taureen cannot appear because uh, I didn't know what to say, so I looked over and I saw on this Pure Zero uh, that Taureen. Could have just as easily been B vitamin or zero sugar. Did I ever tell you about the time that I saw vitamin C's boobies? Well, remind me to tell you about that sometime when you see me. If you want to pick up your own copy of Melvin Helitzer's Comedy Writing Secrets, How to Think Funny, Write Funny, Act Funny, and Get Paid for It, I suggest you do. From Wiggly and all of us here at Wiggly's Book Club, I'm Wiggly. <laughs> a Wiggly Book Club. Someone says to you, hey, hey, you over there, sitting down comedy or stand up lying. How'd you get so smart and or funny? You just look at them and you say the three letters, RIP. R-I-P-H. Reading is fundamental.